hello everyone thank you for coming uh, my name is rahul and today i'll be talking about co-working spaces from a hacker's perspective so i'm sure you guys know what co-working spaces are uh, have any of you like worked in co-work co-working spaces uh, have you been to a space or like you've been there you have worked with someone have you been there so like what was what was it like sorry Oh yeah, it's a it's a collaborative space. It's a flexible work environment, right? So everyone can take a hot desk. So they come in different sizes. So you can take a hot desk. You can take a complete unit. You can take six seater office. And the prices also vary. Uh, you can take by hourly, daily, weekly. So uh, it works like that, right? But uh, if we if we are going to target co-working spaces, it would be like great to know uh, who all work there and who all are using those spaces, right? So uh, I'm just so, I'm sorry I'm just going to check the screen <laughs> because I cannot see anything on the screen like what's going on there. <laughs> so as you can see, a lot of people work there uh, since they are they have a low low cost of setup and they are they provide the flexibility and the place to grow. So entrepreneurs are like the biggest user of co-working spaces. So they use them a lot. Uh, small startups, remote employees, they are definitely uh, using those spaces. So. So that's what happens. Sorry. Uh, so well, everyone was doing fine. Everyone was working great until, well, you have already seen this slide. A hacker decided to walk into the co-working space. So this is sort of a story that I want to share, like what happens when someone, like one of us, walks into a space and what they observe, what are some of my anecdotes, like when I visited different places, how it happened, what, what all I observed. Uh, so please be prepared for a lot of personal anecdotes. Uh, I'm gonna like I'm warning you upfront. Uh, before we start, here's a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Rahul. Uh, of course, uh, I work in threat intelligence. I work for Volon. I am part of Garage for Hackers group, uh, and I have taken some sessions in B sides and Cocon before. And but this is like my first time in Nalcon. I've been on that side for like many, many years now. Uh, I've always dreamed of being on this stage and finally I'm here. So I'm nervous, but I'm really happy that uh, my talk got selected. <sighs> so uh, it's just a normal day. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay, I can, I can talk from it. Uh, so it's a normal day in co-working space. Of course, I cannot see uh, because of the screen setup. Uh, it's a normal day, a hacker walks in. This mic. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so uh, as you can see, it's a normal uh, working day in co working space. Everyone is sipping their coffee, everyone is working, but uh, not our hacker guy. Can you see like who's the hacker guy here? The one with the yellow pants. Of course, the flashy guy. So he's waiting there. He's everyone's working, but our hacker guy is not. Well, because that's what we do, right? For any of us that we whenever we go into a space, what what we do is we just don't sit there. We analyze the space. We see what's what's going on there, like how how people are working there how how are the networks right this is what we do so uh, whenever i go to a place i mean this is uh, not only applicable for me uh, for you for you guys also so whenever you go into any of these spaces what you do is you observe what are the networks uh, what are the access points both the network access points and the physical access points what are the what are these spaces and then uh, if anything is being exposed uh, if there is, if there are any sensitive documents that are being exposed, if there are any credentials that are floating around, so social engineering opportunities. So whenever we go into a space, we start thinking like that. This is, I mean, you can call it the crime of curiosity, as they call it. So we are curious and we are observing things in a certain way. So uh, when I went to this one place, I was part of this startup. I am still part of this startup. So when we went to this one place, 
uh, one day me my friend and i we were like getting bored so we started fiddling around we started looking around and like what we found it was like eye opening uh, it was like wild west world uh, anything like anything was going on so when i looked at th those spaces th that space i i started wondering myself like is this the place that is like god for second place like uh, no one gives a damn here or is this the case with every place right so like uh, w w what's what's the issue like is it like this everywhere so that's when i started exploring right that's when i started uh, going to places uh, so i chose co-working spaces of different sizes and spaces so as i told you they come in different sizes uh, you can find a co-working space in a flat starting from a flat to multi story uh, buildings in big uh, big buildings so i went from i went to places which were set up in bungalows and i also went to like the places which had multiple branches or they were like nationwide so i visited these space and like i would like to present some of my findings uh, some of my findings to you guys i visited approx 10 places uh, because that that's how much it was feasible but i tried to vary my uh, vary the places i tried to vary like where all i'm visiting and if it should be of different kind so before i present my findings uh here are some things to keep in mind i of course cannot read and i don't remember the stuff but <laughs> uh but this this research was done on my personal time on my personal expense uh so i i was i was just got bored so i started looking into this space and i submitted the paper for nalcon uh the issues that i'm going to present they might be very rudimentary they you're going to laugh on these issues i'm 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 sure of that but the real actual issues issue is these issues exist these are the things that i've observed that are going on in a co-working space and on any given day so while you might say there are no uh, zero days or no elite exploits but uh, the thing is why would you need to waste your exploits when everything works as i am showing as i'm going to show you uh so that's that's are those are the some of the things that uh, you have to keep in mind also the research was purely done in pune area because of the requirement of this research because when you want to look into a co-working space uh you, you are going to have to visit that place physically right you cannot just do it over network like i cannot look into a bangalore space over over the network i have to physically visit that place so since i'm based in pune i my research is based in pune area only so uh just for the sake of management or for categorization i have tried to put my findings in these four types uh like from physical perspective uh from the network perspective uh wifi has a separate uh section i'll tell you why uh and also from social engineering perspective so these are some of the things that i got to learn from um from my teammates in uh, rt team like i don't work for rt team i am more of an automation guy as i told you uh but i took their advice i worked on some of these things and these are some of the findings that i have so first off the physical uh the physical part of it uh, so when you enter a space when you enter a co-working space this is this is the first thing that you are going to observe right so uh these spaces what these spaces do is they allocate these uh, they allocate uh, these spaces to different companies right there are maybe 20 companies working at a time there so there are always new people coming uh, people leaving new people coming every day so the security guard and everyone they are so used to seeing your faces so if a malicious actor just like walks by them they are not going to question it because that's what they're used to it's a chaotic environment like they see new faces every day so it's not going to be anything new for them so that's why it makes it easy to get get the access and the security is not alarmed because that's what they do every day they see new faces every day uh you have no control over the access systems so a lot of places i visited they had no physical uh, like door control system or anything like that but even the places that had what they had was uh 
there were like sensors on the doors for every unit, but it was controlled centrally. So this is something that we actually observed and I'm not uh, speaking uh, it just out of my imagination. So we were just scanning our system, uh, scanning a network and we just came across a device, a uh, web service running. So when we visited the service and we tried like some basic password, admin, 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 password, something like that. And what we observed was it was the door access control system. And now just sitting from our unit, what we could have done is, done is uh, like when everyone was gone for lunch, we could have just, you know, uh, unlocked the door, go inside, put some implants and then come out. So it was that easy uh, for, for it. So you have no control over the access control, like the access control systems or the door management systems. Uh, and like, uh, if you, if you don't want to intrude or if you don't want to, you know, go like a thief, the cost of entry is very less. It starts from, I think one company was advertising maybe less than 80 rupees per hour or uh, 300 rupees per hour for your booking room. So the cost of entry is very low. You could just walk into a space. You could just give it a call in the early morning and say, I, I want to use the space and you have the access officially. And did I miss anything? No. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do this <laughs> because I made the notes, but not the complete notes. I didn't copy everything. So. While, uh, while going there, I stumbled onto, like, this is something I'll have to point it out to you. So while stumbling across that room, uh, where our unit was, like when we were working as a startup in a co-working space, so where our unit was, there was just a server room beside us. So uh, I'm not sure what was their thinking in that, but they always used to have that a small piece of uh, stone or paper bit to uh, block it from locking. I'm not sure uh, I'm if they lost the key or not, I'm not sure, but it was, like it was like this. Can you see a little bit gap uh, gap at the hinge, right? So I I was just walking there and you know I stumbled a little bit. So well, of course this happened. Uh, I mean I didn't mean to do that. Of course I saw all the network devices and but I didn't enter. Of course I'm. Of course I didn't. <laughs> I mean I'm curious but not stupid. <laughs> and I stumbled a little bit more and then I saw like there were also the camera devices. So I mean, even there were CCTV cameras everywhere. You could have just walked right in, do your stuff, delete the footage and be out of there. Like nothing happened. Right. <laughs> then there were uh, one day I went to this space and I, I immediately saw there was a security guard sitting there. And since I work for a startup, I don't have a lot of money to waste on, you know, getting paying to these spaces. So when I went there, I saw there's a security guard right front, right in the reception. So what I did was I climbed down, I took a circle and I saw like there were service lift going into that space. There was a back door, uh, that opened right inside the space. So as you can see, like there's a service lift that opens up in a different wing. But there was no one, no one, no one sitting there, right? So uh, this way, I completely bypassed that access. I mean, it's it's very easy, very easy to say like, yeah, anyone could have done that. But these are the sort of stuff that's happening in co-working spaces. Uh, okay. So I mean, who used to write on walls as as a kid, right? I mean, a lot of people used to do that. So. When, when you go into these co-working spaces, there are no actual uh, partitions, right? So for partition, what they do is they'll put up a glass wall. And since we are all kids inside, we love to write on them, right? So I've seen a lot of stuff written on those walls. Uh, people will just plan their meetings on those walls. They'll write next features that they want to apply, that they want to deploy on their walls. And so when, uh, and also before I, focus on that wall thing. There are also, uh, in, in the most of the co-working spaces that I visited, they had a network printed network printer, which was like kept somewhere and you could just connect to the network and, and then print it. So again, a common printing area where you could find a lot of stuff where people keep forgetting the contracts, their IDs or stuff like that. So coming back to writing on the wall, well, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, 
but there's a lot of stuff written on that wall. So the wall is approx six feet by six feet or eight feet. And there's a lot of stuff written on that wall. So I was just walking like after coming from the back door, I was just walking there and I saw there's a lot of stuff written there, right? But a particular string uh, caught my eye. Uh, so then I took a, uh, what do you say? Uh, then I took a zoomed in picture of that area. And what I did was I just uh, mirror imaged it. So actually this was there. So it said the Wi-Fi name. Uh, I had to blur out the company name and the password because of course the password also contained company name. We'll see. <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll see this stuff when we, when we reach to the Wi-Fi section, but so the Wi-Fi word is there. So their SSID was company name, ABC Wi-Fi and the password was something, something, something. So <laughs> this is the sort of stuff that people are writing on their wall. I mean, the kid don't, I mean, they say, right, don't let the kid die, uh, kid uh, die. So I'm some people, at least some people are following that. Uh, now the network part, this is the part that I mean, most of you would be interested in. Uh, so when I went to those, uh, when we were like sitting in an office, right? So we used to connect to a, connect to Wi-Fi. I mean, Wi-Fi is our big part as we'll see in further sections, but one day the Wi-Fi was not working or something like that. Then we connected to the LAN port and well, imagine our surprise. <laughs> there were a lot more people than sitting in our office. And like we, we always do that. We try to run Nmap or something like that. And there were like a lot of people sitting. There were a lot of devices that we didn't deploy. And, and like that got us, that got us thinking like, who are these people? So, uh, when we looked, we came across the fact that uh, the whole network was a flat network. There were no hierarchies. There were like, there, there, it was flat network. So everyone could ping anyone. So everyone who connected their router to the LAN port, it was on, like it was within our reach. Even if we didn't know the Wi-Fi password, it was within our reach. Uh, VLANs, actually we found that they did the segregation by VLANs at one space. I'm, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, and then uh, lots of uh, devices that we saw, saw uh, were connected to the LAN ports. They had lots of default credentials. So I'm going to show it to like, show some of those findings to you. Uh, but, uh, some more things about some more observations about network. Uh, there was a lack of perimeter protection, like perimeter devices, for example, your firewalls, IPS and stuff like that. I mean, we'll see, uh, and whenever, and even if it was there, there was, there were like improper configuration and stuff like that. And if you connected uh, your device to the LAN port, it was just like, I mean, it was just one step below con exposing it to the whole world. Because if you were using outdated windows, outdated firmware devices, or if your devices were just old or had default credentials, it was just like putting it up on internet and let a botnet hit it or let someone uh, like uh, steal your data. Oh, and let's not even get started on like what people did with their Wi-Fi. Uh, it, it actually deserved its own section, so I had to give it in a different section so that this section didn't get long. So I said there was a lack of perimeter device, but I was not actually being true. At one place we did find like there was a, the gateway was cyber room firewall. So I mean, anyone who is sophisticated enough to put up firewall in their uh, environment, I mean, you think they would know how to protect it, right? So like anyone who has used cyber room firewall, yeah. So like, what is the default password for that? Cyber room and cyber and because cyber is so hot. So, <laughs> uh, of course this happened. I mean, my fingers just ran on their own and they typed cyber room and cyber. And as you can see, it's even warning you on the, on the front page that your default password for cyber room is not, not changed. And one of the messages from 2013 and I was like, do you even look at these devices or do you just, someone told you, you should keep a firewall and you just connected it to network and yeah, everything works. So it, but the good thing was, the good thing was there, if you can see the dates, their IPS system was working. So their intrusion prevention system had the validity left. They were subscribed to it and I'm sure it was working. I mean, I, I couldn't see to it, but I'm sure it was working. So. Yeah, now the 
focus comes damn it uh, so as i said there was lack of segregation but not in one place like i came across a place where they had lot of lots of vlans uh, created uh, i think approx 44 44 to be exact so what i did was i was i was connected to one of the vlans my ip was 10.10.x. something so but uh, while i was doing running nmap or something like that what i did was i was thinking something and i kept my network bit as wrong so now what happened was i was able to ping that subnet and i was like this should not happen right this is this is a vlan like there should be a sort of segregation there should be access control and they had a they had a vlan for every unit on the three floors so they had a three floor uh, establishment and they were i am guessing 44 offices there because there's the number of vlans or maybe 40 plus offices working there so yeah i mean when i ping it worked and i was like can i scan it completely <clears throat> can i get a glass of water so i came, i learned that this nmap command works so you could apart from giving the range in host uh, addresses you could also give the range in network part so that's something i learned that day and i was able to discover a lot more devices and devices from these units i unfortunately did not discover a lot of devices that day because <clears throat> sorry because that was saturday and it was cheapest that day so i went there on the cheapest day it was saturday and there were not a lot of online devices but yeah i i could have done the damage uh well this was like this is just to show the impact uh, on cyber room there were like dns setting and uh, there were vpn and there was like rdp port open uh, from the world so there was a mapping that uh, defined like a uh, port forwarding sort of so if i could have changed the dns here i could have controlled the traffic flow for whole three floors right i could have just directed them them to my malicious dns and it would have just worked fine uh some internal applications some demo applications that were hosted on those networks like on different uh, units uh, i had to blur the names also because names were proprietary and they were internal applications but this is a sort of and they had demo accounts running so this is the sort of stuff that you come across when you you know just okay don't try to read it anyone who's trying to don't read it i'll change it <laughs> i don't want to get into any troubles so i so i'll scanning as i said if you put up a device on the lan port it's publicly accessible to anyone working in that co-working space i mean that is, that has been my experience so i came across like okay this looks like windows server 2008 now personally i am i like i've never worked for uh, penetration testing or uh, the vapt stuff or red teaming stuff like i i am a python i automation guy but even i know like window it's if it's windows server 2008 it has to be vulnerable to something man i mean people don't patch their devices that often also this device was part of a domain ad.xyz.com uh so i'm sure i i can see already a smile from anand sir so uh i mean i i'm not sure if the result was true but i just ran uh the meta exploit scanner i didn't want to do any, any harm i didn't want to run any exploit but uh, the meta exploit eternal blue scanner said okay this is vulnerable to ms 17010 ms 17010 yeah so of course i didn't try exploiting it because it looked like a production server which was connected to ad which was running windows server 2008 and vmware and stuff so i didn't try that but of course that, that was something that one could have achieved if they wanted to uh, similarly uh found some devices that were like vulnerable to apache mod cgi that is shell shock uh vulnerability then again some more ms17010 or eternal blue or eternal suite of exploits uh vulnerable machines so this is the sort of uh, trouble that you are asking for when you when you work in a co-working environment without without you know giving much thoughts uh so as i said wifi wifi is the most important part uh okay so wifi is the most important part uh passwords never change once you get into a, a co-working space just for one day the, the password is going to work for like next 6 10 years who knows uh 
the passwords never changed. Uh, none of them had captive portals. One had the captive portals, but I just entered a random email address and it worked like a charm. So I'm not sure what was the point of that captive portal. Uh, lots of routers uh, had the default password. Uh, so, and since we were in a flat network, uh, admin admin works worked in a lot of places. I mean, it worked in places more than I expected it would work. Also, we were able to see internal DNS addresses, uh, port forward, port forwarding mappings, uh, PPPoE passwords. So PPPoE password is the interesting one because in some networks, it also allows you to log into your web portal. The password and uh, the username and password is same as the PPPoE uh, for web uh, interfaces. At least it works on new broadband. So if you get, oh, okay. Yeah. So if you get PPPoE password, you also control their uh, internet speed and everything else. Also, uh, we saw like templates pam like uh, printed like this everywhere. Uh, it contained password for all the conference room, all the meetings room. Uh, then we came across a interesting SSID. Like we read the password and then we came across the SSID server room. And I was like, there was no way server at the right one to see what will work, right? 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 Okay. Well, <laughs> so it, it worked. I mean, <laughs> and the password worked. And upon that, admin admin worked. I mean, I I didn't even. I mean, I I wanted to uh, do like, I wanted to learn some you know serious exploitation, but the assignment did not allow me to. They just it just worked on first try. So like these are some of the screenshots of the Wi-Fi that I saw. I'm just gonna rush through it because it's just the Wi-Fi login password that I. Uh, also, the Cisco VPN router. Uh, what is this? I cannot see. It. Yeah, PPPoE. So this was PPPoE. I was not able to see password, but then I tweaked a little using the uh, browser tools, and it just spit it out on me. And just same for the Cisco uh, router. Uh, I just like it was the password was there. It was just set to input type because to password I just changed it to text, and it was it started showing me password. Uh, sorry, I'm going to rush through because I, I've just been told like there are like three, four minutes left max. Uh, social engineering. This is the most important part when you are trying to target a company. Uh, because as I said, a lot of people work from a lot of different companies. Uh, people are more open to talk to you. Uh, so people are used to seeing different people on the desk, on the cafeteria area. So you could just go, you, you could talk to them and, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, you could just try to get some information about it if you're targeting someone. Also, uh, one thing that I learned was one pro tip that I learned was if you go during the uh, lunch hours or the chai sutta hours, uh, people don't uh, like people don't care who's going in, who's going out because there's a lot of people going in, so you could just tailgate right with the people, not into the units but into the co-working spaces. Another thing that I learned was uh, when we were working in these spaces, a maid used to. Uh, like when we used to come to our office, the office used to be clean every morning. And I was like, what is this sorcery? How is, how is it getting cleaned? Uh, but then it turned out the housekeeping staff has a access card, which has access to all the units. So you could just, you know, talk to them or bribe them or do whatever you want. And once you get that access, you could just clone the card. You could, I mean, a lot of, uh, lot of stuff that you can do once you have access to the space. Uh, but now, now that I've shown you, like, these are some of the findings, sorry, some, I, I had to rush to some of them. Uh, but why should you care about them? Right? Like these are co-working spaces, startups use them. It's, it's okay. Right. But, uh, like, is it, is it even worth her time to uh, waste? So I, I would like to try to throw some light on these, some facts. Uh, I mean, just to tell you the popularity about, I mean, I'm literally throwing the light there. So 1.7 million people were estimated to be working in. Uh, how much is the 19,000? Yeah, 19,000 co-working spaces and the Indian co-working industry, like the Indo Indian co-working spaces, they are set to receive approx 400 million worth of investment uh, in like coming months or coming months. So, and there are like 500 co-working spaces by an estimate in India. So you can see like if 1.7 million people are working, if all the budding startups are there, Budding startups are there, so I'm just going to rush through. What's at risk? The most important part that is at risk is your million dollar idea. Because what do startups have? Why do people 
start the startup because they have some revolutionary idea, right? So apart from the obvious stuff, your million dollar idea is on the line because you are not aware these things is, exist in uh, co-working spaces, but these things do and someone might be stealing your idea or your plans. And uh, I mean, you can read the rest of this stuff. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to take two moments. Sorry. Uh, some tips. The obvious stuff is obvious. Don't keep default passwords. Uh, teach your employees. Uh, I mean, tell them not to divulge information. Tell them not to keep weak passwords. Uh, secure your devices. You can use a VPN for outgoing, outgoing connection. You can put a Raspberry Pi in front of your uh, router and then connect it to LAN so that uh, you can put up some sort of rule so that no one can reach. Even if it's a flat network, no one can reach you. Uh, uh, like a lot of people don't trust obfuscation or obscurity, but you can try to keep discrete Wi-Fi names. So like it's not immediately obvious, like who is this company and they cannot try to guess your password. Uh, yeah. So sorry, I had to rush. Uh, these are some of the people I would like to thank, like Volon's red team. I, I work there and they helped me a lot. Uh, Shravan for helping me, like he got bored one day in office and then he came up and then he started and mapping everything and then we came across this idea and and then we were pawning a lot of systems. Uh, Rinal for helping me with all the visuals that the visuals that you're seeing on the screen, they are all, all originals. Uh, she did, did it for the, uh, lights. And of course, shout out to the garage for hackers team. Some of the members are here. Thank you for supporting, uh, like when I was just a student, uh, discussion, uh, you can follow me on C zero DIST code on Twitter. Uh, I'm available offline after this talk also. So, we can discuss there, right? Uh, and if you have any ideas, you would like to ask any questions, uh, please meet me. I'm here for the conference till like evening of third. And you can also follow me on Twitter if you would like to have some discussion. So sorry, I had to rush through like last part. I was told I'll get 40 minutes, but now when I saw the schedule, it was 30 minutes. So that, that was all from my side. Uh, sorry, I had to rush through some of this stuff that was not planned, but it happened. Okay. I can take the questions offline. He's, he's looking into, he's looking at me like you have to get off this stage. <laughs> oh, well, hell yeah. Well, I cannot answer. I, I never wear yellow pants. So, and I'm not sure, but a lot of people are wearing yellow t-shirts. So you can ask them. <laughs> so that was all from me. Uh, I hope. I hope I put some light on the issues that people are not talking about. So if you want to see why no one is talking about just do a Google on security in co-working spaces, you're going to get results like physical security and stuff, but not the cyber security part. So thank you for coming and uh, let's discuss offline. <laughs>